A very good afternoon to all of you. It is such an honor for me to be with you here. When can you not have 1,500 guys willing to take the afternoon off and spend it with Jesus be in the wrong place? Huh? This is wonderful. This afternoon, I've been given the opportunity to share with you a small bit about why this evening is so important. And very briefly, I'm going to share with you a small bit about my family. I'm an Irish tenor from Dublin, Ireland. I came to the United States back in 1990. I received a scholarship at Catholic University. I did my undergraduate degree in musical theater. I did my master's in liturgical music. I have a degree in international marketing and human resource management. But at the end of the day, people really don't care. All they ever want to know is, do you sing Danny Boy or do you not? <laughs> I've perfected Danny Boy, but uh, we won't be hearing that tonight. However, I am the father of eight boys. My first child, Mark, is perfectly healthy. It was my second child that changed my life. My second child, John Patrick, was born with a very rare metabolic disease a disease that left him blind and deaf and confined to a wheelchair, and it brought me into the world of special needs. For those of you who have a special needs child tonight, and for those of you who know of someone with a special needs child, I ask you specifically to pray for them in this holy hour. John Patrick taught me the importance of love. Although he was blind, although he was deaf, his silence spoke volumes. John taught me the importance of living the present moment and not taking it for granted. But he also introduced me to one of my best friends and that beautiful poetic passage that we have of footprints in the sand is my best friend. Because in the lowest times in my life, Christ carried me. And there was only one footprint on that sand. So I'm here to share with you my relationship with Jesus Christ. And I invite you to take much more seriously your invitation to your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. My third child, Francesco, at the 20-week sonogram was diagnosed with a right hypoplastic heart, a disease of the heart that was not related to the metabolic disease of John Patrick. On the 12th of August in 1997, Francesco was born. He was put on a life support machine, and he was getting ready for the operation when the doctors came back into the room and they told us there was nothing that they could do. Both my wife and I were faced with the hardest decision to this day was to take my son off life support. We had mass. We had the sacraments. We turned off the life support machine, and we brought our son home, and he died in our arms six days later. For those of you who have lost a child, who have lost a loved one, this hour is for you. I have Connor. Connor is 6'7", perfectly healthy. He's 22. I have Anthony, 6'4", great horse rider. One day he will represent the United States in the world of equestrian and well on his way to do it. Perfectly healthy. I have 18-year-old Joseph Michael. Joseph Michael, six months after he was born, diagnosed with the same metabolic disease. He, too, is blind, deaf, confined to a wheelchair. Great kid. I have Declan. Declan is 10. Declan has more energy than all of you combined. <laughs> and there are days that I threaten to put him into a wheelchair, <laughs> as only a father can do. God knows I've got enough wheelchairs in the building. And then I have Peter. Peter is nine years old, and two days after he was born, he too was diagnosed with the same metabolic disease. He too is blind, deaf, confined to a wheelchair. How rare? 200 children in the world, 100 children in the United States, no cure. John Patrick was the oldest child with a metabolic disease who went home to Christ last year. 22. I share this with you because for all of us who have difficult crosses in our lives, we have a tendency to turn the, to the wrong things. I'm here to tell you that for those of you that have lost a child, lost a loved one, a mother, a father, a brother, a sister, a husband, a wife, 
Tonight, you are here because Christ wants to tell you he loves you. And he has your loved one in the palm of his hand. This afternoon is your time. For you, I just hope to, for you to experience the presence of Christ and to know how much he loves you. I want you to take a moment within this 45 minutes to open up your heart and be honest with yourself and ask yourself the question, if Christ was to ask you, if Christ was to meet you tonight, if he was to meet you tonight, would you be ready to meet him? I thank you for the invitation to be here. For those of you who know some of the music, I would encourage you to join with us in singing. For those of you who don't, just allow that music minister to you. And our meditations are in the first person to give us a greater understanding of how close Christ is in our individual life. At this time, please stand as we sing the O Salataris. Oh. 
bless our lives, nourish all who hunger for his feast. Shelter them with your love. Behold, behold the Lamb of God. All who eat, all who drink shall Gospel reading. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me. of men. Immediately they left their nets and they followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James and his brother John. They were in a boat mending their nets and he called them and immediately they left and they followed him. children. You are my hands and my feet. And to whom much has been given, much will be expected. You are living in a time of great grace. Just ask me for the grace and I will give it to you. you in the palm of my hand, and I will watch over you and protect you. You must trust me. You must know that I love you, and I stand at the door of your heart, and I gently knock. My children, if you want to grow in my love, you must spend time with me. If you want a personal relationship with me, you have to invite me into every aspect of your life. Your social time with your friends, your workplace, your homes, and most importantly, 
your family. Today the family is under great attack. And without family unity, my graces cannot flow. Prayer will unite families in a swift manner. And yes, the family that prays together will stay together. No one understands this more than my mother. The power of the rosary has brought many, many souls back to me. I ask you today to put family prayer back into your homes. Night prayers. Morning prayers. Grace before meals. These are all important ways of giving graces to protect your family and especially my children. If you tell me that you cannot find the time to pray, I will help you find that time. As a family, you may have to sit down and reprioritize what is important in your life. Take my hand. Let us walk together anew.
your people leave my I will bring you 
my children of this world must learn about love again because for many the essence of love has been so distorted they do not recognize it as valuable or seek to obtain it love is quiet and steady my children love can be relied upon Love does not diminish in the face of temptation. There are many kinds of love upon earth and all genuine love has its place. And I want my children to examine the genuine opportunities for love in their lives. And certainly a family is a primary source of love. But many families have failed in love. children drift away in bitterness. My child, the obligation to love someone does not mean that you will not be hurt. And on the contrary, often I must say usually that the obligation to love ensures that you will be hurt. But it carries with it another obligation. That is the obligation to forgive. If you would like to see an example of someone who has been hurt, take a moment now and look at me on the cross. to be hurt, my child. I understand and I see everything. But I also did not deserve to be hurt. And I tell you now, dearest ones, that you have hurt me many, many times. Your neglect alone wounds me terribly. you and truly I forgive you. Please accept my forgiveness and let us begin our walk together anew. Make me welcome and I will heal, nourish and recover your soul. Dear children of this one true God, seek out people who have hurt you in your life, especially in your family, and offer your forgiveness to them now. If someone has rejected your forgiveness, that is their loss. You will heal and you will be rewarded for it matters not to me what a recipient does with the gift you have given when I examine your life. So welcome me as your guest, my beloved one. Where the 
sadness ever joy oh master grant that I may never see so much to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand to be loved as to love with all my soul of ourselves that we receive and in dying that we are born to eternal life oh master grant that I may never see so much to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand
My dear children, I long for you to walk in faith and trust that I am with you in all aspects of your life. Do not get discouraged when faced with adversity. Turn to me and be assured that my peace will be given to you. My Father in heaven knows all your needs, and he is with you and feels your pain in times of trouble. He sends me to light the way for you each time your heart is heavy and afraid. so that I can give you the comfort that you need. I will send you the spirit of truth, and I will give you abundant blessing. And as you draw close to me, I will give you the strength to go out to the world and proclaim the good news. That yes, I am alive, and living in each and every one of you. Take comfort in knowing that my grace will provide the strength you need to bring my light to the world. Spending time in private prayer will give you that grace. And my individual plan for you, my divine will, to you. Take a moment now in silence. Listen to me in your heart. My children, trust and know that your future I have walked with you. Believe that my strength is enough for you. I ask you to be courageous in the face of temptation. Be wise in your discernment of the truth. Be just in your dealings with others. And always be joyful, knowing that your Father in heaven loves you. In the gospel, we read about the faith of another woman. she could just break through the crowd and touch the hem of the garment as he was walking by, she knew that she would be healed. Tonight, Jesus is among us, and he will give us that blessing. I ask you to reach out in your heart and invite Christ in.
sacramento veneremo cerno et tanti cum documento no vocera tritui prestet fide suplementu sensum defectui genitori genitoque la sed iubilasio Salus sana virtus quoque sit ad benedictio procedenti habut proque tam passit laudatio Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be your holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be your glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, virgin and mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Please rise and join with us in singing. Well, my friends, I, I hope in some way for the past hour that you've really understood, number one, how much Christ loves you and how much he calls all of us individually every day, not just once a week. And for some of us who've got that 52-hour relationship with Jesus Christ, I would like you to reevaluate it. We go to Sunday Mass and we tick off the box. I've been with you, Lord, for that one hour on a Sunday. If I were to go home to my wife and tell her, honey, I got a great idea. For the next year, I'm going to spend 52 hours with you. I'm not sure you'd want to hear the Irish response. <laughs> but I will promise you, it wouldn't work. Our relationship with Christ is so important. And more than ever, we have to attune ourselves in our daily lives 
to listening to him in the workplace, in our home, as you heard. I want to thank very specially the Eustace Committee here that puts on this beautiful conference. It's very, how would I say, inspiring that you all took time out of your day because I know you're searching for Christ in your life. But what you've experienced in the past hour is something you can receive in every Catholic church around the world, in every chapel around the world. It's something we should be very proud of as Catholics, to think that there's a priest every second of every day saying, Body of Christ, Body of Christ, Body of Christ. Give me another church that does that. The Catholic Church is a tremendous church around the world, changing the lives. Why? Because we have the Eucharist. It is the center of our church. And I always ask people to pray for our priests, that they'll continue with that same zeal and desire they had when they lay on the floor in front of the bishop and said yes to their vocation. We continue to pray for our priests. Why? Because they are the linchpin between us and Jesus Christ. Without our priests, we don't get the Eucharist. That's how important our priests are. And more than ever, we need to support them, we need to encourage them, and we need to also look at our own children and say to ourselves, would our child be interested in a vocation? Because the joy in my life has always been the fact that when I brought Christ in, he brought me places that I never thought I would ever go. Ever go. Why? Because I really feel that Christ has given both my wife and I a very clear mission for the world of special needs. That's why he gave me three of them. So I'm very, very happy to say to you that my wife in 1999 opened a foundation called Faith and Family Foundation, committed to the world of special needs. We currently have a farm in Percival. It's 50 acres. I live in Northern Virginia and with my family. And on that farm, we have 18 horses providing therapeutic riding for 120 students a week. A half hour lesson on the horse. We have a beautiful uh, swimming pool program in the summertime. I have even every detail right down to a hair salon and a nail salon for children with special needs. You can come and get your hair cut, your nails done, and you can get your wheelchair detailed all on the farm. Why do I know so much about that? In fact, of all the qualifications that I have, I am most qualified to talk to you about being the father of three special needs children. I know that world. I know how hard it is to get to hair cuttery and have an autistic child sit in a chair and scream while the parents lose their mind and apologize every five minutes to everyone passing by. And after they've finished giving a tip of $100 thanking that hair salonist, they'll never get back there again. They can't get a second appointment. I know that world. That's why we did the simple thing of setting up a hair salon for children with special needs. If you would like to be a part of that and would be willing to give a cup of coffee a month, just even $5 a month to help my foundation, I would be most grateful. I'm so grateful for people like Eustace who truly not only support the program but have always encouraged other people to support the world of special needs. You can always go on my website, markforrest.com, and click on Faith and Family. Since I was last here, two beautiful things have just happened. We became the para-equestrian program for the United States Center of Excellence. There's only five centers in the United States. There's only two that are centers of excellence, training not only the athletes, the horses, the teachers, and the athletes that represent the United States in Tokyo in 2020. We're the number one center in the country. We're very proud of that. But it became about as the vision and uh, how God has just continued to bless the work for special needs kids in those worlds. In connection with the night of prayer, it is available on CD. And I'd encourage you to have a look at that in your own prayer life. The first album is Come Walk With Me, Gentle Invitation. Second one is a little bit more challenging, Change My Heart, O God. And the third one is called Cast Into the Deep. 
And in line with all the talks this morning, everyone, I honestly believe, wants to be a part of Jesus. We want to get in his boat. I honestly believe we do. But as soon as Jesus hops on the boat and starts untying the rope, we go, hey, 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 Jesus, hold on a second. I didn't think we were going to leave the dock. <laughs> Christ is asking us, untie the rope on your boat and get into the deep. Go into the deep. And as Kelly said earlier on, if you want to catch big fish, you got to go into the deep. You don't catch fish in shallow waters. And don't be afraid, because Christ will equip you on your journey. Again, I thank you. I'm going to leave you with one final song, and I want to let you know that if you would like this Eucharistic program in your parish, come walk with me. Just email me, and my office will send you out information to send to your parish. There are 27 nights of prayer in, uh, across the country. Uh, this Lent alone, just between now and April, and then we'll end up with a night of prayer in Tel Aviv uh, in the Holy Land just after uh, Divine Mercy Sunday. So I thank you very much indeed. I hope that you have enjoyed experiencing the presence of our Lord and know that my invitation is also Christ's invitation. I leave you with this final song. All of us have a difference to make and all of us can raise up this world because Christ raises us up. Josh Groban couldn't make it this afternoon. He asked me, would I do it for you? So I said, Josh, you stay at home. I got it covered from an Irishman. Okay? And join us in the chorus. You could turn it up a little bit. When I'm down, down don't my soul Trouble comes, and my heart burdened be, and I'm still waiting in the silence till you come. You sit a while with me, Lord. You raise me up so I. And on mountains, you raise me up to walk on stormy seas. And I am strong when I am on your shoulder. Raise me up to more than I can be.
Yeah.